Hi again, welcome to the Interaxis YouTube channel and Interaxis.io. Today we're going to talk about security tokens. I touched on security tokens briefly when I talked about custody, when I talked about exchanges. Uh, now I'm going to go into a little more detail. Of course, I'm not going to delve into too much of the technical part. Uh, I'm going to talk more about um, why, we're, why we see them coming, why they're important for you, and, and how you might benefit from them, how they impact the economy. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about what they are. Security tokens are essentially a way to, uh, in code form, denote ownership in some sort of asset on a blockchain. It's just a smart contract that denotes uh, my ownership of some sort of asset. Those assets could be real estate, oil and gas, uh, ownership in some private or public company. It could be uh, debt. It could be an income stream. Whatever it might be, it's some sort of asset that's denoted uh, with a security token. Well, why? And we'll talk about why we might want to do that. First, we'll talk about a security, right? If I own uh, shares of, of GE stock, right, General Electric stock, um, it's denoted with with some sort with with GE and with a transfer agent that I'm the the owner of that stock. I can go to an exchange. Uh, like the, the, in this case, the New York Stock Exchange, and I can sell it. So Adam owns GE. Ron wants to buy it. I sell it to him. He gives me money, and Ron now owns the GE stock, and I now have the money. Very simple, and this is what happens with, with public companies, right? They're not denoted necessarily electronically. At some point, there were actually stock certificates for GE, um, but, but they're they're kept track of at a transfer agent. They're probably kept track of digitally, right? But, but they're tracked and, and stored with a, uh, a transfer agent. But that, that's not a token. That's just a, a, an electronic, um, almost like a spreadsheet or database that keeps track of that, right? So now we, we have this idea of security tokens because I might have, and, and why might I want a security token to denote that? Okay, I might have or I might know someone who has, we'll call it XYZ real estate company. Okay, and XYZ real estate is going to go buy a, a bunch of, uh, we'll call it multifamily um, real estate, right? Or multifamily or, or commercial real estate. And they want to raise funds to go buy this real estate, right? So. As it happens right now, if I want to buy, you know, um, we, we'll call it 10,000 shares for $1 million, okay, that's, what, $100 a share, okay, for XYZ real estate, I might have that. They might pay me some sort of distribution as I own it. But the problem is I, I lack liquidity, and liquidity is something we talked about uh, early on uh, in, in terms of overall financial planning and everything. Liquidity is something that's very important, and that's why we have the public markets, right? The public, the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ and such provides liquidity, but private investments like real estate, REITs, uh, business development companies, things like that, don't necessarily have liquidity. They don't necessarily have someone to buy it, because when I buy this XYZ real estate, when I decide to give them my million dollars for 10,000 shares or 10,000 membership interests, what I'm gonna get is this huge stack of paperwork, right? And I'm going to have to sign all these pieces of paper that say that, that give all the legalities of what I can and can't do, right? So they're going to have all the legal part and they're going to have all the regulations. And some of the regulations say things like I have to be an accredited investor, right? And an accredited investor in the U.S. means I have to have a certain net worth and make a certain amount of money. The government says that if you have a certain net, net worth and or make a certain amount of income every year, you can kind of do whatever you want with your money. They're not going to watch you quite as uh, vigilantly as they would someone who doesn't make quite as much because you can risk it. You, you, you have the money to be able to take that risk, to possibly lose it, to not necessarily have the liquidity. And the government's saying, look, that, that's up to you now. You have the money. You figure out what to do with it. We're going to police, or not police, we're going to make sure that the people who don't have as much don't get taken advantage of and they don't potentially lose all their money. So I have to be an accredited investor. These regs might say I can't sell any of this within a, a certain amount of time called a lockup period. 
Um, it also says that anyone else who buys this has to be an accredited investor, right? But the legalities might say, Adam, you can't sell. You have to hold this essentially until we get rid of all this real estate and we sell it. Okay, and why, why might they do that? Because if I'm going to go sell this, let's say uh, I need the money. Let's say I, I need half a million dollars. I want to go make another investment or I want to buy a house or whatever I need to do. I need to, I need to liquidate some of this. Okay, now here I am. I have my shares and here's Ron over here and he says, well, I sure would like to buy that. Now we have to figure out how much 5,000 of these shares are worth. Well, to do that, we have to value all the real estate. So we have to go up here to XYZ and we say, we need some sort of valuation or appraisal or something. Well, they got to stop what they're doing now and give a listing of, of all the property and what they think it's worth and maybe get a certified appraiser out there and all this pain they have to go through when all they want to do is manage the company to the best of their abilities so that all the, the members, all the owners, can get the most money possible. So they have to stop what they're doing to value it. Right? And if you value the property and you value the distributions and everything, and Ron might say, okay, instead of $100 a share, they're worth $150, right? So my 5,000 shares are now worth $750,000. Ron's like, okay, I'm willing to buy that, and I'm going, man, that's awesome. I would love to sell you that. Well, now the problem is they're worth $150 for everyone. So now all the members might want to go sell theirs to someone else, which is a pain for XYZ real estate because they have to keep track of all the owners on what's called the cap table. And the cap table basically shows who all the owners are, how much they own, so that they can get their distribution, so that they can vote. So basically XYZ Real Estate can keep track of everyone, get them all the notices they have to and everything. It's a, it, it's a pain to do and they'd prefer not to have to do it because it takes time away. On, on top of that, Ron now has to sign all this paperwork because he has to make the same agreements that I made to start with. So not only does he have to make sure that he's accredited, but they have to make sure that he signs all this paperwork. Well, that takes a lawyer and, and everything else and time, and, and it might cost $20,000, $30,000 to get Ron to, to re-sign everything. That takes money out of these pockets or money out of these pockets or money out of his pocket or mine or whatever, and, and it's an expensive process. So in all this legality, XYZ Real Estate might say, look, Adam, if you're going to invest in this, your money is locked in here for good. If you want to sell and Ron's going to offer you this money, you have to buy it, you have to offer it to us first. And they might even say, Adam, if you want to get out, the only way you can get out is you sell back to the company and we're going to give you either what you pay, we're going to probably give you what you paid minus some sort of legal fee. So we'll give you uh, your million dollars minus a hundred thousand or fifty thousand dollars for legal fees and repapering and everything else because it's a pain for us to have to do this. All right. So now I've lost my liquidity, which means I've lost some of the value. Now, in exchange for giving up liquidity, I probably get a higher return than I could get in a lot of other investments. Right. That that's part of I, I guess the problem in this country and the problem anywhere in the world really is once you have money it's a lot easier to make money because if I have a lot of money I can lock it up for a longer period of time I can be less liquid and I can get a higher return I can invest in real estate that not everyone can right I can invest in other companies that not everyone can because I can afford to lock my money up uh, until such a time as it's a good time to sell that property or sell that asset Okay, so that's how it, it works in today's world. Now what happens in the security token world, why we even have security tokens, is this. We can take all this legality, right, all these regulations, and write a security token, right, XYZ token. Okay, the great part about that now is, if I want to sell this now, I go to some exchange, right, I can go to uh, an exchange over here, and I can say, I'm going to sell my XYZ tokens, right? I'm going to put them up on the exchange. And this exchange might be on the uh, 0x protocol, which is a protocol for uh, basically for security tokens or for ERC uh, exchanges. Ron might come into this exchange and he might say, I would love to buy XYZ tokens. You know what's great about it is because it's on a blockchain, I get to see the distribution history. It's transparent, right? I get to see the value of the, of the holdings. I get to see exactly what it's holding. I get to see the votes and everything because it's on a blockchain. So he, can, he gets visibility in this. And I might say, look, I only want to sell 5,000 
of my tokens. And he says, look, I'm happy to buy 5,000 of your tokens. Here's your money. The great part is now these tokens change hands, these 5,000 tokens, but XYZ real estate doesn't have to do a thing extra because everything is denoted in the token. In the past, they were just paying the distributions to my wallet. These are these distributions. And now half the distributions are just going to Ron's wallet. OK. And they didn't have to do anything because it was all done on the token. It was all done on the blockchain. On the blockchain, that's the beauty of the security token, right? Is, is this uh, ideal, this thought in the future that eventually we'll be able to take uh, assets and denote them as security tokens so that we can more freely exchange them. Now, this exchange here has had to do the what's called the KYC. AML, right, which you hear a lot. This is know your customer anti-money laundering. This is basically making sure that uh, anyone coming in here like Ron, they know who he is, they know all about him, they've gotten maybe passport information or driver's license, social security number. They make sure he is who he says he is so he's not laundering money for uh, terrorists or drugs or, or uh, mafia or anything like that. And, and they really know who he is. On top of that, they're making sure he's accredited. And once they make sure of that, once those boxes are checked, now he can trade on the exchange. He can buy. And now any token that comes in here that can only go to accredited investors, Ron can now buy and I can now sell. And the exchange happens. And XYZ, all they know is they're, they're paying whichever wallet owns the token and they don't have to do anything extra. Right? So they can keep doing what they do. They don't have to value anything or, or anything like that. We determine what the value is on this open exchange. And they don't have to encode something that says, Adam, you can never sell this. They might just say, Adam, you can't sell it for a year. Like they, theirs might be a 12-month lockup period, but that's it. So that's where security tokens are, are going to enter in and are, are actually uh, really exciting. So where do we see them happening in the future? And I'm going to talk uh, in another video about some interesting happenings recently with uh, the, the security token world. But where we see them uh, where, where I see them, at least, uh, I'm in Texas, right? So we see them in oil and gas. You can invest in oil and gas drilling in the ground. And oil and gas tokens are, are it's going to generate income, right? Oil comes out of the ground or gas comes out of the ground. Someone pays for it. And I might get a, a security token. Or, or I might get paid in tokens and I own the security token. This is something that is highly illiquid now that could eventually uh, be liquid. Uh, I know some companies that are, that are doing this. Uh, real estate, as we said, which has been one of the biggest uh, use cases for security tokens thus far. Um, you could see where they'd be debt tokens, right? Uh, whereas I might loan someone money and then I can sell that loan to someone else who just wants the income stream, right? In, in that regard, I can sell an annuity or an income stream as a security token. Um, I, uh, I'll talk ab about where it fits into uh, athletes and, and sports, entertainers and such. You can, uh, art has become a big one, whereas people have tokenized works of art. I will, I don't know if I'll have the money to, to buy a, a Picasso, one Picasso, right? And that's a lot of risk. But if someone tokenizes a, a certain Picasso painting, I can buy a piece of that Picasso painting. And if it ever gets sold, I get to participate in that. Or I can just sell my little piece. If the value of it goes up for some reason, I can sell my little piece. So there are all these instances where you can tokenize something. You can create a security token to denote uh, ownership of some sort of asset. What, what will also happen eventually is you will have public companies, uh, their stock denoted in security tokens because that way it can just be traded more easily, right? You might not have a three-day settlement process because once they're denoted via a security token on a blockchain, we can trade those tokens freely. GE can be a, now a token instead of uh, have, having to be stock certificates, right? Or, or, or just an electronic spreadsheet or electronic database keeping track of who owns it. It'll just be on a blockchain with everything encoded into it. And that way GE will know exactly to, to pay the distributions or the dividends to the wallet of whoever owns it that moment. 
right? Whoever owns the token, that moment gets dividends, gets to vote, whatever else it might be, and, and public entities, public stocks, public debt, everything that's public that's traded now on a public exchange can just be denoted in a security token and, and be traded that way. So that's where security tokens sit. That's why they're so exciting, because what it's going to do is it's going to potentially open up all these private investments uh, to not only you know, provide income, but now you're going to get to take some of your liquidity risk off the table because now I can sell it. And someone else who might not have been able to buy initially into these can now buy them. What it's also going to free up and why it's so important for the economy is the people who, who start these companies, right? Who, who manage these, who, who own these companies, who own real estate and, and oil and gas and, and athletes and such they will be able to create tokens and create more investment in their project. And, and right now, real estate owners, they, either you have to know the, the real estate developer or they create a real estate investment trust for a billion dollars or $500 million or something, and it's a very expensive process. Well, they'll be able to do it and, and get investors for much smaller amounts of money, and you're going to have really, really good managers and really efficient um, entrepreneurs who are able to start a company, start a business like this, and get investors. And the investors are more willing to invest because they have the liquidity option later. They have the ease of getting dividends and distributions later. The, the managers are able to better manage because they don't have to worry about managing the cap table and managing who owns it and dealing with, with all the shareholders and their desires to transfer and everything. All they have to do is worry about running the company and the token will take care of the ownership and the distributions and everything else. So it's going to create much greater efficiency, I, I think. This is an opinion, and, and I feel like it's going this, to way, th this way. We have to get through some regulatory hurdles, uh, of course. But, but, in, but what we're seeing is uh, a lot of momentum in the security token world. So that's security tokens for now. Again, not a, a super deep dive. but. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about them because there are exciting things happening. Um, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, interaxis.io. Hit us on our website and at interaxis8 on Twitter.